they could have some ass assistance from uh, these units here which uh, are moving now that the fog has cleared so they might come up and reinforce but really at least uh, this regiment should stay in reserve and Bean's, uh, his intention is to move over here with his regiment and artillery and uh, form a uh, second line of defence here. So, um, oh, and the uh, Williams, the overall federal commander, is here, so he's probably going to move out to be able to lend his uh, command support to uh, his three regiment commanders here. Okay, so. Um, let's see what happens because uh, the, it's the federal turn continuation role. They've had one uh, action al already so far in this cycle, and now they um, have to choose a leader. Uh, what? Yeah, so th this might be a disaster because I, I don't know what I'm doing, and I'm just snatching a bit of time in between me having to do other things. Oh, last thing to mention is um, that this denotes that there's a disorder on the top battery of there. Okay, um, well I suggest then that that is the job is for um, either Williams or, or Bean to make a, a role to come and join, join the uh, defence here or effectively support it from behind and uh, I think I'm going to go with Bean. It's not important, um, it's not you know, critical, so Williams will not lend one of his three command points for the role. So Beans uh, has a naught modifier, he's attempting movement activation, so he basically needs to roll a six or less. And he rolled a seven. So modified seven is a, a random event. Four, the random event is heat lull. Now, if the turn is 12.15 or later, well, in fact, if it turns at 11.30 or later, we have heat effects. If it was 12.15 or later, that would mean that the, uh, the action phase is over. Effectively, that turn would be ended as everyone has to take a rest from the intense heat which they were encountering. So we roll again after a random event. Back to the Federals can decide again what they want to do. I'll continue with Bean. He rolled a three, so Bean's good to go. You can't see that action, so let me zoom out. Okay. Bean's coming across here now. There's a stream he has to forward. Um, these guys are in column, so uh, that's one, two, three, four, five to go up. And they have one more movement point left. So they're going to go here at six onto the road. Swing around. Is there movement action? Okay, now the artillery has different movement point costs. What would they be? So the artillery has seven movement points. Now the fox lifted. Clear costs two movement points and a stream just costs one. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six and they won't be able to get up there. Okay, they're going to continue escorting them and that's Beans. Two battalions take uh, movement action, so they're now on activation two. Any more action activations they will become fatigued which will engender the danger of becoming exhausted and effectively losing all of next turn. Um, and possibly the one after. Okay, so uh, that's two active consecutive activations for the Federals. Um, they're going to roll again. Uh, this time um, Williams is going to roll to, to run forward, so that's an independent leader movement. Uh, he's got five. I believe he had some bonuses, but anyway, he's in the clear for that. So I forget how many movement points leaders have, but um, it's ten now, and uh, on streets and so forth, it's half a movement point. So one plus one. Oh no, that's the bridge over that stream. So that's one, two, three. I think he's going to go here which he has a command range of seven, so that puts him one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, 
six seven okay no let's let's put him back there just in case that puts him within range of all his commanders around here to be able to support them so that was the third federal activation now who will go next um, I don't believe Cahill and his artillery are doing much there um, let's um, shall we bring this back? Nicholson might recall that. This one's up ahead. Um, let me see, let me see, let me see. Okay, Roberts, I think. No, if he goes out there, he's going to be inviting danger. Okay, Roberts is going to, to pull back so he can support pressure on this side. So Roberts is rolling for activation, he's on naught. It's not urgent so we won't use any command. Um, so again we're looking for a six or less. Four, five, six, yes. So uh, Roberts is going to throw these fellows. One. Now these are, these are in line. One. No, let's say, okay, they turn around. One, two. Tell you what, no, what Roberts is going to do is he's going to put. Oh, yes, he'll do that. Okay, so here, that fellow's moving back here, and this fellow, one, two, three, is moving back here. Okay, so they're still in line. And, uh,. They have taken a fatigue action. That's Robert's fellows. Now um, he's going to vroom, he's going to roll again to try and uh, put that one into um, a modified line so he can move it more easily. And that's an eleven, so that goes over to the um, Confederates. So the Confederates get a free action. Okay. Now this is what they need. He could rally this fellow, but um, okay, I think they're going to Confederates going to scratch this attach, attack and they're going to scoot around here and um, Hopefully then they will be able to cut off these from the defence of the arsenal here. So Helm's going to make a bold attempt to cut them off, uh, which leaves these fellows to reorganise. But it saves the Confederate con Confederates. They will, I guess, that the hope is they will eventually ma amass here in full strength. Doesn't it does not give them a very broad line of um, for manoeuvre essentially because we've got the penitentiary here that cuts off any movement between there and there. So essentially the um, federals would only have to defend this line. That's terrible. No, they're going to have to continue pressing here. Okay, they're going to seek to go around this battalion here. Okay, one, two, three, four. Okay, Helm's regiments are all within control and he's going to... Have any of them activated yet? No. I think one's supposed to be exhausted, but never mind. Um, they're in column of companies so they can go through the streets. But only one... In the streets, you can only get, have one unit in a hex at a time on the streets. So uh, that occurs in movement too. So if so, I can't move him around there through him. He doesn't want to go. Let me zoom in. So the 35th Mississippi cannot move through the 4th Alabama and along this street. He doesn't want to go up this street because that would put him in the zone of control of Keith and uh, obviously he could be fired upon. 
he could try and move through the uh, partial urban block here that's going to be slow movement he's, uh, he's strength 5, he's strength of 4 so really we wanted him as the assault force but it, for manoeuvrability purposes the 4th Alabama are most convenient to fight down here the trouble is this is a strength 8 unit the 4th Alabama are not going to do much damage against them the Confederates have got problems and I think I'm going to have to sit a bit and decide what to do I think, but you know, it's also there's the pressure of we're in the middle of combat guys, you know, we can't sit around and chat about what to do um, what would make sense was to bring, would be able to bring their artillery up but it would only have line of sight down the street um, it, the trouble is, is this this artillery stack here is just covering this whole area that's a deadly um, strength of fire that battery can bring to bear um, how can we squeeze through here is it possible that is such a strong unit I mean, okay I really don't know what to do here because the Confederate units just aren't so strong I think um, we're going to move the action, see what someone else can come up and support. So Alan is going to be moving forward and then we will see what happens, what effect that might have on the uh, federal force here. These two guys obviously wanting to circumvent that force. Um, let's see, so may may maybe Alan's um, uh, brigade here will be the deciding factor at this point of the battle ok so Alan's folks are moved they're going to move forward they are these are denoting they're in um, column modified line so on the roads they move at one movement point ok one, two, three, four, five. These ones following up. These ones have to come out of the wood. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Um, hang on a minute. No. Was he there? No, he was there. He's out of um, command range, so he can't move with them. Okay, so that was the the um, a Confederate activation. No, that's the fourth Louisiana and the thirtieth Louisiana. Okay. So. Uh, the Confederate uh, Alan's going to go for another activation. Five, six, and eight plus is one, nine. That's fine. Um, second activation. Unit Boyd's Battalion will attempt activation. He's fine. So, what was that? One, two, three, four, five. 
and then another one attempt to move an activation no that's gone back to the federals okay so boys battalion Taken one activation. Okay, so we're back to the Federals. Now, uh, so obviously they're going to think about responding to that manoeuvre, I guess. Um, the, if you remember, they, they, this is a victory location, the State House, because the Confederates are trying to gain control of the city uh, represented by g gaining control of that hex but without the taking control of the arsenal they do not have a, a proper victory um, it's best for the Federals if they stay forward of I think it was this Uncle Sam Street if they stay forward of it because that's another uh, sort of minor victory to the Confederates if they push them right past. So I think they they're gonna. Well, they have these units ahead of it. I guess that counts. Now it's so early in the day for it feels early in the day for the Federals to fall all the way back because then we might have basically a siege um, for the rest of the game around here. That would be interesting. And I think that would essentially invite counter-attacks from the strong federal forces. I don't think the Confederates are going to like that. So I think, I'm thinking this is not going well for the Confederates at the moment. I'm going to move back, um, attempt to move back Dudley's lone battalion here. Oh sorry, that he gets free activation doesn't he? And uh, he's in modified lines, so one, two, three, four, five, moving up along the streets. Okay, so uh, Clark will attempt to activate and uh, he can move his two regiments, all the artillery, uh, art uh, artillery he's from some abandoned guns here and the supply wagon. Three, he's good to go. Okay, so we got general withdrawal on this flank. Let's see if I can zoom in there. Maybe you can see a bit better how the movement works on the streets. Okay, sorry about this annoying camera fiddling around. Okay, um, so five movement points. Don't want to get too far away from them. One, two, three, four, five. I think that's fine. Still moving along the streets, not through the urban blocks. That's four movement points, I believe. Or going into the, um, so that's a partial urban area. This is an urban block which is different rules in effect for moving into that. That's heavily congested area. Um, so where were we? The artillery, these are in column. Oh, got three sections there. One, two, three, four. Ah, they can't pass through them. Five, six, seven, Oh, how did that happen? Um, okay, so the artillery is moving fairly swiftly down there. Um, it's actually, a road and street, so they can have half movement points. So they've got seven more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so they're going to get out of the way because I don't feel they have much 
benefit in the urban combat environment. Okay, we could have them guarding some streets, but there's too many streets. No, they do need to guard streets because we might not have enough. Um, we might not have enough units otherwise. So basically, they, they had enough movement to do that and this guy's ammo depleted so okay let's move these artillery fellas one two three four five um, they only have a strength of one they can only defend but I, I guess they would be used as speed bumps <laughs> if necessary okay and these fellows going to roll again because there's a gap here you can't see what I was doing there ok sorry terrible camera work this isn't working I think I'm going to have to edit a load of this out Clark's going to roll again because um, no, Dudley will roll again to try and get in here because there's a gap in between the penitentiary wall and here don't want Alan to slip through so Dudley and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He's within seven range of Williams, so Williams is going to lend him a point to add one to his activation roll. Okay. Oh, sorry, subtract one, since he's federal. He rolled a seven, goes down to six. Perfect, just what he needed. So, uh, trouble is that battery's in the way. So he's have to, going to have to move forward there, but fortunately it's not in Alan's zone of control. One, two, and then I think he's going to try and move into that urban block. That's four points. He doesn't have enough. Okay, so he's situated there so he's guarding these two streets okay um uh, now so that's Dudley's fellow and um Clark's going to roll for an activation again. He's too far to be aided by William. Seven random event. Eight. Now I think that's going to be no event at this point. Arkansas information, same as six. If it's seven o'clock or later, which it is, the Confederate player has the option to use the Arkansas arrival table. If he declines, treat as no event. So you see, the Arkansas could remain as a threat um, or it could be invited on the board and uh, hopefully assist the confederate um, actions I think it's going to remain as a threat at this point so that's a no event back to another r roll attempt for um, Clark 7-6 okay no, sorry, it's not. He doesn't have a minus, does he? So that's seven. Another random event roll. Nine. Which is CSA goes. So basically, it's just CSA goes. And uh, then I assume we go back to federal rolls on the turn continuation table. Uh, so that's nice. Alan could run the 
Yeah, could run the street there and then get massacred by all of this lot. I think we're beginning to see how it's going to pan out. Uh, okay, these fellows will have to run up. I don't think there's anything amazing that we can do. Um, okay, so one unit per street. following five now they have line no they don't have line of sight because the urban block Brigade. Ruggles gets to move free as Thompson's Brigade moves, so do the supporting supply and um, cannons. Okay, I think I'm going to leave it there for now. You've probably got enough of a picture so far of how the activations work or not.